can actually try. If you've got a chair knee, you can also try, but I, I would do them standing because if I could, I would, but we'll, uh, we'll dial in anyway, so. Okay. Us. Oh, I think it's Matt. Body guys. Just start like this. You're just going to very, very right. If you call, do it a bit more actively. Just go to this. Just don't stress the body too much. And you can also just say, you can just do these sitting down. So if you just sit down like this, they're actually quite nice to do because you basically isolate the hips, you isolate the lower body, and then you can just play with the upper body here. Especially, these are especially good if, you, if, if you're seated or if you want to do them seated, you can do them from Cesar. They're all really good for the shoulders because I just let the hips sink down. So it takes all the stress out of the knees, the lower body. And I can just go to, what can I do? Or how can I free the upper body a bit more? So I'll also do these seated if I feel the lower body is flexible, fine. Nice and loose. If I have problems in the head, in the shoulders and the arms, and the connection between the hands and the hip. So we'll look today a little bit, this, this again, this connection between the hip and the hand, because <clears throat> it naturally leads to this stuff. Just go here. And if you're doing it seated, you've also got an extra base. So you've got the two feet and you've got the contact with the with the ground through the stool or through the chair. And if you're in Caesar through the through the heels, the two knees and the feet. So you've got an extra base, an extra strong base. And then just come into the front and back. And for me, the front and back is actually better to do seated. Because you, I get much more. Because I've got a really stable base. Front and back is really much more flexible, much more free. And again, get much more range and motion in there. A little bit with the hands as well. And if you're playing also on a stool, you can also do this with taking the legs off the ground and you can play with just the, just the body. So it's, you can play with the balance extra when you're kind of seated on the ground or you give your, you basically sacrifice your balance to the, to the stool, to the chair, and then you can really play with it. So you've got a lot of options, actually. You've got think, more things to play with when you're in a, in a stool. So limitations, Restrictions also give you freedom as well if you can play with them. So they give you new opportunities to play. So, uh, and then going left and right, side to side. A little bit more tricky, but also the benefit of doing the seated. <coughs> really feel the hip. So I can really feel me, I can really feel much more sinking to one side of the body and the hip. So if you're doing this, you're doing the standing, most of you are standing, just get the sense of the weight shifting to one side through the hip and then into the foot with the knee just there in between to kind of catch the whole thing. Just let the hands kind of go with it. So in this case, play with like taking the body all the way drawing it back. You're going to kind of sink there. And again, the be again, benefits of doing this on the stool is I can really take my balance away because I've got an extra base in the ground. I can really explore the balance a bit more than I can standing up. And then just go to a feeling where you're kind of elastically moving through the position. So in this case, you never really sacrifice the balance. You just shift it, shift it, shift it. Start to bring the hands into it as well. Yeah, and the good thing about, again, seated benefits and Cesar benefits with the arms, I just I can also just let them drop onto the body. 
they just drop onto the body and then I just leave them there. So I don't, I don't need to think about the arms at all. So this is also one of the benefits. And if you're kind of standing, just let them kind of rest by the side for now. And they just kind of drag down. Drag down. There we go. And then the one that's really difficult for the chair or for seated for Cesar, easier on Cesar, more difficult on the stool, is the rotation. So trying to get the hips to be mobile while they're really grounded into the, into the floor is quite tricky. So it's a bit of a harder movement to do seated down. But the benefit of it, again, the limitation will, will show me how I'm using the body because if I'm doing this standing, doing the rotation without the hip really doing it, doing it with the knees, this is actually grinding against the knee again. So this is a, this is a, where I've got freedom, but I'm actually using the body in a, in a kind of not so great way. So <clears throat> the, the stool or the sesa will also, will also teach me how to really move from, the, from this part of the body, from the hips without relying on the lower body to move the body or to create the movement. So if you're kind of sitting here, kind of comfortably down, then I'm really forcing the hips to do the work. And just play again with the angles, make it a bit bigger, let the body come a bit more over and make the arms a bit more flexible. So cheers, playing with these kind of spiral motions to the front, to the front, and a little bit to the back. A little bit to the back. Not too much, you don't want to go so far on the spine. Again, if you're doing this in Cesar, if you're doing this in a seated position, you can explore the bands much more because I can take the feet off the ground. So I can explore the body from the center, right from the center. <laughs> Again, those kind of benefits from doing different positions. And just start to take this out to the way. Again, really a nice position to do this from seated, so is that also one of the best positions to do the way from is, is lying down on the ground flat. So also play with these movements in different kind of contexts, different positions of the body. Seat is very nice because you've got the hips again, strongly grounded. I've got three points of balance. Just allow everything to oh, through the ground. Really open into the back, really closing the body down. And then just start to take it into different angles. A little bit like the rotation work, but try and keep the sense of the spine being flexible. So it's still gonna be flexible, still gonna be fluid. But just start to take it in a little bit more different position. And start to use the hands really coming into the ground. So just very lightly touch the ground, roll back up. Touch the ground, roll back up. You can touch with one hand or you can touch with both. But just get a sense of coming into the ground with the hands. And start to feel like it's a wave. So it's like you gather it up and then you press it out to the ground. This way. And one of uh, Tolkien says his exercises was was like this, and then like roll it over. So he had the exercise that you find in the in Kia Kido, and it was like really like a kind of roll it over away. And he used this for when he did Ushira movement. So he used this kind of movement. But just get this sense of something kind of again, from the center, from the hips, from the core, da, 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 and then waving down. And again, really focusing on this idea we, we looked at yesterday, which is like the communication of the hand coming from the hip. So that movement really being communicated through the hip, from and through the hip. Right. 
and we really kind of center, center periphery, center periphery, center periphery. That's it. That's it. Good. That's good. Nice, Keith. Yes, yeah, it. Great. Very nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll do these swings. So there's three, three of these basic swings. So I'll show them something first. Because got a better idea. So you can start like this. You stretch up, and then you're just going to drop through the hips, through the knees. Now again, if I use the stretcher badly, as, this is why injuries sometimes are quite good, especially mobility and structural injuries, because they tell me where I really can't move the body. Because if I put the body into a weak position, the stretcher will just, and then I'll get pain. But so get like this and then, and then just feel that you drop the structure. So the hip, knee, toe, hip, knee, toe, hip, knee, toe. And you just want the, the structure to fall into itself. I really don't, I'll show you on this slide because I can do it. I really don't want to do this with the knee. So I don't want the knee to fall into an empty structure. Just get a sense of raising up, sinking down. Raising up, sinking down. Down. And if you've got a kind of stool knee, you can also play with this sitting down. Again, you've got a really stable base. You can also do it as well. So you've got this, and then just dropping down for it. Dropping down for it. I'm really focusing now on like the base, hitting the stool. <laughs> this, this, this. And the key with this is like, if I'm working with this, is to keep the length, keep the extension, and feel that the whole weight of the structure goes go, go, into the in, to, go, go. I'm trying to communicate my weight into the stool and the stool into the ground. It's a bit more tricky because it feels less flexible. Again, I can just use it to focus on loosening the upper body a bit more. Okay, good. We'll go to the second one. So you go like this, hands out, and this is rotating through the spiral. I'll show you again standing. So you go like this, 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 this. Let's take it a little bit fluid because we've done it again, not before. And again, just be really careful, especially if you're standing. <clears throat> if you're kind of healthy, you can totally get away with it. Uh, and again, if you're injured or you've got kind of problems with the knee, the moment I feel like I'm twisting against and twisting with the knee to do the movement, that's when I'm aggravating the, the joint. So get the sense that, again, that that, that um, relationship hip, knee to toe is always going to be the same. So you're doing a rotation work, but the rotation's coming from the hip, not from the, from the lower body. If you imagine you're in water submerged, you're trying to kind of get the hip to create that motion. So if you imagine like tr if you're floating <clears throat> in water, trying to spin the body, or trying to rotate the body, turn the body. You can do it with the feet and the hands, but in this sense, you want to get the sense that the whole body is going to create the rotation. Something happening from, again, the hip into the hand. Just focus on that. That. Okay, you can do this seated. It's a bit tricky because the hands are in the way. John. Yeah, 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 exactly. Ah, that's a nice one. Nice. Very nice. Oh. 
Yeah, just try. Actually, John's doing something that's really nice. It's like just just do this one side. It's like this, 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 this. So what I what what's happening a lot is like throwing the arm out. So if I throw the arm out, it feels like that the arms are like like I'm I'm pushing them out. With this case, really get the sense. It's it's a related like to the jaw work. This this feeling like the it's as if someone's pulled your arm up and stuck it back on with a little pin like this. So there's there's no there's no feeling like I can kind of muscle through it. It's really kind of loose, dead, dead, and then just try and feel it. You initiate the swing here. So it goes to the front and then see if you can open it to the back as well. That, that. So there's no sense of the arm kind of leaving the body, swinging the weight. Just get that it's the hand's gonna kind of swing around the body. So it's gonna swing around the center there. There, that's it. And then just try both sides with it. Okay, there you go. So the back. Just play with the arm a little bit. So you can kind of pass it to the back, pass it to the front, pass it to the back, pass it to the front. And all the time the shoulder should feel quite loose. <clears throat> should feel very loose. You can also do this in the stool. Okay, and then just playing with the arms totally. So again, let them really go down, loose. It's like there's no, no, no feeling in them at all. So there's no feeling that I'm gonna kind of move the arm. Just get that and then get a sense that you pass a movement from the, again, from the hip into the shoulder. Just work your way up through to the hand. So what I want you to feel is like communicate the hip to the shoulder. Now the head's, the, the hand's totally dead. The head's dead as well, because I'm not trying to think about it. But the, that. So you're trying to communicate the feeling, the movement from the hip to the shoulder, just that. So very simple. And again, try not to muscle the shoulder. So I can also do this, but try and get a sense that it's actually the hip pushing the shoulder out. Just that, so it's actually quite simple. Try both sides. Just go in like neutral and then really feel it there. And just go from like really still Totally still, and then really feel where do I have to move to move the hand? If I'm not going to move the hand, where can I move from? So I can move from the shoulder like this and just isolate it. I can move from the hand. I can move from the elbow. I can move from the shoulder. I can even move the head and get it to go. But what I really want, if I think about a unified movement, I want to go from the center. So I want the center, the core of the body to initiate that movement. So just really feel, go like really quite subtle and really feel at this point, no movement, quite still. And then I want to move the hand. How do I do it? And really feel you can't move the hand. You can't move the hand, you can't move the shoulder. You want to try and get the sense that the hip, the center of the body, will release the movement. <coughs> That's actually easy, quite easy because if I go to this position, if I keep the hands, do nothing, and I just do something in the in the stomach. So I do like this, boom, boom, boom. so I stick my stomach out. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Everything will go with it. So if I move the center like this, everything starts to vibrate with it. If I block the body, this won't happen. So I can block the body like this and then move the center, move the belly, move the stomach, nothing communicates. But if I release it, everything goes. So the feet start to vibrate, the body starts to vibrate, everything will go. Even if they're totally dead, totally limp, I wanna pass the movement to them. So just play with that. And then once you can get there, Pass a complex movement out. So I really feel that the arm's kind of useless. And then just start to feel that you can pass a kind of useless movement. And wherever the hand ends, just keep it there. So if you're standing, it will, if you're standing, it will go back to this position. And just pass one movement to it. 
Hulk's name. Okay. And you want to feel like the arms are lifeless, but the center of the body is really engaged. So even though the arm feels very light, very dead, I want to feel the core of the body is like <coughs> charged, switched on. So I want to get this feeling now that the, the, the hand's dead, but <coughs> something in the core of the body is <coughs> switched on. So there's a kind of there's a kind of double thing that needs to happen. I need to switch the, the, the limb off in a way, switch the feeling off, and then allow the core to activate it. And then just start to work with it a little bit more so you can do subtle movement. Just start to make it a bit more bigger. And I'm trying to now pass the feeling all the way to the limb, to the, to the, to the periphery. So that feeling of being charged, being engaged, that switched on. I want to now pass through the hand, to the body. And I also want to pass it down to the ground, to the feet, boom, right there. So I feel that the center kind of, at the, or the, the point of the movement or the intention of the movement goes like, <clears throat> lights the whole body up. So that kind of feeling of engagement you get with the, <clears throat> with the Kamai, it's this feeling like the center <clears throat> engages the whole body. <clears throat> or when you take the sword, <clears throat> Everything kind of lights up. It's all to do with feeling and nothing to do with, with like a form, with a position. It's all to do with feeling in the end. That's it. And you basically need to bore the body a little bit with these so they can feel totally boring. And that's the, that's the kind of state you need to get to a little bit with these. This is where you'll start to kind of go into into real kind of subtlety and detail work. Yeah. Okay, great. Everyone's in. You're all in. Good. Nice, Serena. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Yeah, you all got it. Great. Totally great. Yeah. Great. Okay. And you've all got it in like doing it once so you kind of get to hit and then you're there. Now just see if you can keep it. So you're going to go like, just pass it around. The moment you feel like I drop below 80% connection work, I'm not kind of happy. Just stop again and just go back to it. And then just feel that you can again, get into the core, the core like so. And I might just go through, but I want, to, I want them to feel again, kind of full, fully engaged. And now for, you don't necessarily have to come to the body all the time. So you don't kind of have to slap the body, but just feel that engagement. And for me, I've got to feel like I need that kind of uh, intention, like I'm going to attack someone. So this is why I like martial arts because they, they give you a very clear job to do. So if I think about like a kind of slap to the head of someone, I really think like my intention to do that and my, my body movement needs to be aligned. So the function and the intention are the same thing. I don't need to think about my intention. I just accept that oh, my intention is to slap the person in their face. Bam! And then I try and align my intention, my feeling to that. And I have a very clear target of what I'm doing and what I'm trying to achieve by it. So this is where martial arts are really quite useful in terms of training the body. So just get the sense now you kind of uh, slap or something like this. So you've got a very clear intention. Whoa! So that's really now a feeling of, and I think about slapping, and it doesn't have to be slapping someone, it can be slapping something, but it's, I need to have the feeling like I'm gonna kind of really, really, really strike through something. And this feeling where the slap is really great because it's a very like high impact. And we've probably all of us slapped someone in our lives. We might not have punched someone in the face, but we probably all, I think, slapped someone in the face. I know I have for sure. So, and you've probably also been slapped in the face quite hard and quite effectively. So we, we, we know instinctively what that feels like. Probably quite a lot of have been punched directly in the face. So the feeling of being slapped and the feeling of slapping, kind of a common thing. This is why I usually work with pushes and slaps because we have these as kind of common, common um, experiences. All of us have been pushed in our lives and all of us have been punched 
Uh, all of us have been slapped. Not all of us have been punched, usually. Ah, that's it. <laughs> Good. Okay, and this is where the looseness can get in the way. So just watch this. I can do the looseness, but the body, the, the core of the body's gone into a looseness. So it's going to this. Now, if I slap someone like this, the structures, there's no structure behind it. So the weight of the body's not being communicated through the, through the movement. So think about the body not being in tension, but being in engagement. So I need the body to go into engagement. So that moment of impact, it's like doing the grip with the sword. This, 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 everything goes, switches on. And I need to do that with the slap as well. So it's a, the whole body goes into engagement, but it doesn't go into kind of looseness. That's one way you can do it for sure. And that is very effective, but it takes like a high level of, of um, grounding work and balance a lot to be able to kind of fall through the movement. So just get the sense right now of like engaging through something. That's it, that's it, that's it. What? Good. Okay, good, you got it. Nice. Okay, good. Nice. Good pop. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good deal. Some of you are doing this one. So like the reverse, the reverse that, which is like go. So this is like, uh, I don't know, it's like a kind of get it. Ch children do it all the time, like get away from me. This kind of uh, move. So it's, it's a kind of space, it's a kind of space move. This is great from, from karate also because it goes straight away into the, into the reaction. So it goes into the kind of back fist. So it's this kind of sense of this. Now, rather than that, think about, if you think about, you've got, just take a posture. So you've got the front foot, back foot. The, the slaps usually gonna come from the back, from the back hand, from the back foot. Bye -bye. And this one's going to come from the front, this. But just, just get a few, it's like that. It's a different kind, it's a different kind of arrangement. And it's using the front of the body. So you've got now that, that. And obviously it involves the slap because that movement back is the slap. But you've got the reverse now. So you've got that, that. And now the reverse movement is the strike itself. So this, this, this. And just play with, first play with this, like this, open it out, back. This, open it out, back. This, open it out, back. Go, 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 go. And again, hip, hip, hip. Let the hip send the hand out and retract it. And then just start to make it a bit smaller. Still feel that you're kind of heavy, heavy striking out. Right, both sides as well. Yeah, that's it. Ah. And again, keep the core engaged all the time. As you do it. Yeah, no, good, okay, good. So this is where I, I, I don't like Tai Chi so much because it's too vague for me. So. Yeah. Now, if you understand that through years of years of training, totally great. And Tai Chi is incredible. It's just for me at this moment, it's not, it's not my cup of tea. So what I, what I want to feel in this one is rather than like, like I'm moving a ball, I want to feel like I'm throwing the ball away. So I want to feel like I'm doing something with it. So I want to feel in this case, like I'm kind of striking something rather than just passing something. Now it's the same thing eventually. And the, the two sides of the, the, the same movement, essentially the same, but just get the sense that the, the purpose of it now is like a striking movement. This gives me a bit more feedback on the body. It's a bit hard in a way to kind of really do this kind of well and really know what the intention behind that is, which is slightly different, but just get the sense that you're kind of now working with a, with a strike. Good. Okay, good. Nice. Very good. Nice. Okay, and if you think about this like a child, a child would usually do this kind of thing like, 
in a way, it's like get you out of my space. It's to get you out of my space. Now, what I don't do is it's really related to stuff we've been doing to, uh, this week. I don't want to send the movement away from it because I've left my space to do it. So I don't want to give up my space. I want to get you out of my space. So I really feel that now I don't move at all. <clears throat> this is why stools, chairs are really great because I can do these like this. Someone comes into my space and <clears throat> no, I don't need to go anywhere. So in a sense, if you're kind of seated or doing these kind of things, the person can come into the space or the attacker can come into the space and then try to kind of get them out. But I don't do it by doing this. <clears throat> This, I, I sacrificed my balance to do it, and I'm not willing to sacrifice my balance to do it. So I use this kind of sense like you were like this. Yes. And stools, chairs, says that's great because all the weight can just, I can just sacrifice all the weight down and not out. So just get this here. Right. 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 So if someone wants to come into your space, you can get them out without having to move. That's ultimately what you want. Oh, good. Done, good, 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 good. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spotlight, spotlight John because he's doing something. Place. This. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Okay, good. Yeah, so if you look at this movement, the movement itself is like a whip. So, and what John's using like a kind of, uh, this is like a, an extension of the, the hand, just like we would use the bokken. And then you basically exaggerate the movement. So just get this feeling now that when you do this, the, the urakane eventually, or this kind of back fist slap, it's eventually the, the feeling and it's like a whip. So I want you to get the feeling now, a bit more structure again, but keep this part of the hand, this part of the arm, very light, very loose, and then get the sense that from the core, it goes out and back. So I want you to feel first, it's as if your hand's really wet. So it's soaking with, with water or, or sanitizing gel, and you want to flick it off. Ram! I want to flick it out. So the first thing is getting the flick out, flick out. Flick out, flick out, flick out. And this Uraken is actually quite a versatile movement because I don't have to make it with the fist. I can actually make it with the fingers. And this will go towards the eyes usually in karate. Uh, just get the sense that you're kind of flicking them out, flicking them out, flicking them out. So the structure in the shoulder is quite strong, solid, but this whole area is very light. And especially the fist the wrist, the fingers, you want this kind of this, you want this kind of floppiness, like jelly. This, this, this. And just play with it, try and get the, just get that feeling of a whip. Whip, crack, whip, crack, whip, crack. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay now you've got the whip out just find the whip kind of back so there's a kind of there's a kind of send it out draw it back now it's very subtle so this is a really nice movement but it's like yeah, done. something comes back something comes back so the, the flick out is basically the pull back cha -cha -cha -cha. Da, 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 da. So it's a bit like a jab that I wouldn't kind of pull it, hold it out. Uh, 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 uh. So there's no kind of holding the limb now. So it's like, da, da, da. there we go. Ah. Ha. This is really interesting. <laughs> ah, okay. Ah. Okay, just notice one thing, what's happening with your position before you do it. Just notice what position you adopted before you do it. This is actually one of the problems with the Temi work. So quite a lot of the time we go automatically into this. Now, this is good. This is like, a, this is like fighting stance. The problem with it, I've, I've adopted a position before I've done something. So I've given them a 
signal. I'm not going into self-defense or anything, but just in terms of what I say work, I've given you a position, I've given you a sign that I'm going to go. Now, in terms of a temi work, I don't want to give you anything. So I'm going to walk up to you and <laughs> the, 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 the attack's going to come from nowhere. So don't tr try, and, try and avoid like having a specific position, especially like a fighting stance. This is, this is good. It's good for protection. It's good to protect their head. And it's good to kind of get the movement from that. But just have the sense that you're actually going to adopt no position. For, for now, just feel like that. And then just get the sense now it's done. Just send the hand out. Come, send the hand out. Come, send the hand out. So that it comes from a kind of position of being very neutral. And then comes out. Comes out from that. That's it. Just play with that because, yeah. What this exaggerates, going from a neutral position, is the thing I do before I make the attack or before I make the move. So if I'm in a punching position, there's a tendency now what I see is like, uh, uh, there's a kind of ready, then go. Uh, ready, then go. And the same here, it's like, yeah, ready, then go. Ready, then go. Just get the sense you go, ready, ready, boom. Uh, ready, go. Ready, go. So it comes from nowhere. So just watch that, that thing that you do before you do the strike, that we all do it. And you basically need to just make it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it's not really possible to see it. So you're just trying to make that signaling. This, something go with the hand, something go in the face, something go in the chest, something go in the legs. And you're trying to minimize it to the point where it's just done. One thing. One thing. That's it. Bam. Good. Nice. Yeah, the best word in English for this is if you want to make it casual. So it should be casual. It shouldn't feel like a kind of forced movement. It should feel like it comes from like a casual stance. Bam. You want that kind of... Okay. Kind of... How about hip here? Use hip. Like yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, in this case... Yeah, in this case, the, the hip, the hip's gonna fire the movement out that. But it's quite a short movement. So in this sense, it's not doing the hips not doing that. Because then I got to kind of pull it back. It, in a sense, what you're doing with the hip is like that. And that's gonna draw it back. So that that is gonna draw it back. But I just watch in this case not to do pull it, pull the hip too far. And then I've got to like gun come a long way back. So just feel like the hip comes from, from that. Okay. So there's a kind of the best way to do this is like get the hands like this, feel it, and then the hip. Dun, dun, dun. So again, I can I can shake the whole system from from the hip. So if this is relaxed, the whole thing will go. This is a kind of strange thing to do, but I really need to feel this, this. This, this, this. So just play with this a little bit, but you've really got to go. I got to force the feeling a little bit, but I got to get the hips, the center to work. So I'll do whatever I need to do just to get the center to work. Work, 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 work. And then this, just play with it a little bit. Also, it's a good warm up or to get the body like, da, 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 da. get the whole, yeah, like that. <laughs> good, <Adrian. laughs> That kind of fluidity, you would do these in like dance classes. I do these, these exercises that come from dance classes, all this kind of stuff. So I steal them because they're very useful because I can see dancers using the center, using the ground, connecting to the hands. We were talking to John, I sent an email about flamenco dancers. Flamenco is the most incredible art for communicating the body to the hands. And, and we can learn so much from watching these kind of people, just from watching them. And if you take classes with them, they'll give you really, really great tips of how to use the body and great exercises. So sometimes going outside the martial domain is a good idea, as long as we bring it back, because you need the feedback from doing something. Uh, that's it. Good, Caroline, very nice. Doom. <laughs> great. Very nice. There we go from the, the feeling of it. I'm going to go to the form now. Normally you would actually start with the form. So 
just get the shoulder, shoulder width apart a little bit, really a little bit wider, just there. And you're going to go to this position. So the, the hand finds the center line, center line of the body, though. And then this hand that's going to make the strike, wrap it around the, the back of the head. So it's going to kind of go to this position. Yes. So the shoulder needs to be quite loose. Don't kind of hold it in, in tension. It becomes here, here. And then feel that usually the arm is a bit like a guide. So the hand's going to kind of slide down. And at the same time, you're going to go out. This hand's going to come back this way. So again, just do the first few quite slow. Shoulders back and down. You tighten, tighten the, it's like you screw something up. So it's like a, the tightening doesn't come from tightening the body up, but from the movement itself. There's a kind of corkscrew in the movement. This, and then out. There, out. So the first few just do the same side and just get used to the coordination of dong, dong, dong. Dong, dong, dong. That's it. The key thing now that's new is like this hand, the, the, the front hand. So really get the sense that every time it's going to go. So it's going to kind of slide across the body. And there's a few intentions with this hand. The main thing is that it, it catches the, it allows the body to find the center. So it allows me to really balance the movement because one of the dangers with this move is it goes to the front. This, and I really want the feeling that it goes to the center of the body again. And then the other intention with this, I said the other day is like, this is like a grab. So you can like grab with it. So there's like a grab and a strike. Very, sh very short. That's it. And just do a few one side, about eight, eight or 10, and then just go to the other. So just have the feeling, grab, find the center line and then release it, release it. Just be quite loose, especially with the hands, you can be quite loose, especially in this one. And just focusing on the structure, the shoulder, the elbow. And again, let this whole structure be very loose, it's very, very light. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. So, my, yeah, sure. Just yes, with the with the back side of the hand, not with the tegatana? Or yeah, no, no, you can do it that way. So you can also do it like that, like towards, that would go like usually like towards the bridge of the nose. Go into the, in this case, use the, if I'm gonna strike with the fist, it's kind of in this area. So I make that quite hard. And then I strike with that. Nor, what I normally do in this case is actually do with the, just with the back of the hand. If you with the back of the hand, or I go to the fingers. If I go for the kind of soft, go for the eyes. Not advisable, but that's very effective. Just to go towards the towards the eyes, towards the face. Okay. Ura ken. Ura ken. Ah. Nice. Oh, good. Nice. Very nice. Nice. Great. <laughs> nice, Catherine. Nice. nice. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Michael, I always, uh, uh, I always uh, think about, okay, when we do this, uh, yeah, let me... is it our hip and our shoulder is aligned? Yeah. Or if it, yeah. This works, this one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Think about, let me just spotlight myself again. Where am I? Where do I put your, put your... I don't know how, how far it has to go this. Yeah. Think, of, think of the structure. Think of this one like the, the shoulders and the hips. Now I want to keep that as much like a kind of block as possible. So I want them to act in like a this way. Now the moment in this case, the shoulder goes out of that block, that's when I'm kind of compromised forward. So if I punch this, the, the best way is, is this is why the square stance is really, is really, um, it's really good for, the, for this, for training the attorney, because the moment I keep the hip here and I pull the shoulder forward, that's when I know I'm out of balance because I've broken that relationship between the shoulders and the hip. So just get a sense in this case, it's like that. So if the shoulder go, if the hip goes forward, the shoulder goes forward. And if the shoulder goes forward, the hip needs to be there to, 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 to catch it. If it doesn't, then I'm falling out of balance. So in this case, this usually is taught with the, with the ski. 
So that kind of relationship is best taught with the ski because I don't want to do that. Push, push the shoulder up. So just get the sense, go, go to the, if you think about the core of the body, the shoulders, the hips, that it's, just think that that's always going to stay in relationship to each other, like a square, like a block. So you've got then this. So if I move the shoulder, the hip goes with. Yeah. And I don't want to push the shoulder out. Yeah. That. Thank you. That. That's when I'm out, totally out. Okay? Yeah. I want to feel like. <clears throat> Actually, and in, and in the end, this is going to be very quick. Bam! Like this. It's going to come from, bah! from, from any position. We'll do a little bit of the form. Let's see. This is a really great coordination as well for the for the right side, left side. Really good. Okay. Good. Okay, and now when you do this, this is also it's going nowhere in the stance. So you can really focus on just dropping the weight, sending the hand out, dropping the weight, sending the hand out. Just go now to the, the center, you're gonna take a step with it. So okay. this is gonna come from the front foot, front hip. So it's it's not gonna come actually almost impossible to do. Yeah, you can do with a step like that. So if it comes from the step like that, I have to go from the back hand. But just feel that this is gonna come from the front hand. A little bit like how we do shomenuchi. So when we do this kind of work, this work, it's like that, but just feel that now it's like that. So you can also go into the position. So take a stance, find that position, and then just feel that you press it forward and then pull it back. So you go into the stance, use the back hand for the center line, wrap the hand around, and then just feel that you press the whole body forward and the hip, the shoulder, everything goes with it and then comes back. Back. That comes back. That's it. Good. And the first few, the first few when you do this, if you think about the back foot, start from quite a natural position, wrap it, and then just the first few, just focus on sinking the weight, not moving the back foot. So just like, gun, 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 gun. and then this one, out the back hand, get it to come to the hip again. And then just focus on sinking it down. So I'm not worried about moving them in space, but what I'm, it's a bit like doing the first subaru. So you keep the back leg down, go. Back leg down, go. In this case, back leg down, go. Draw it in, send it out. Draw it in, send it out. Come back. So just play with this. The back leg doesn't move. It's a, it's a bit the same story with the weapons. Like I want the, and this, we did the drill this week, so this kind of ski. I want the intention, the movement to come from the core of the body. Again, it's like what we did before. I want the movement really to come from the core. So the intention also needs to come from the core of the body too. So in this case, if I think about doing uraken, I really need to think that what I'm doing, doing the movement with is the core of the body. So that the, try and get to the essence of the movement, which, or, which isn't about the fist. It's not about that. It's about this. So it's about what's happening in the core of the body. This is where you get to, if you can get more close, closer and closer to how you start the movement, this is like the core of the movement. And this, that's like where the essence is. The closer I can get to the essence of the movement, which is a movement just a, that, 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 then you, can, then you basically unlock the movement because I unlock then the form, with all, I unlock it from the goal. The goal is to punch someone in the face in the, in, with, the, with the back of the fist. Oh, it's kind of easy. Done. And I can do lots of ways to do that. 
but this kind of movement, which feels like something expands you now, this is really adaptable. And we use it with Ikkyo, we use it with Shomenuchi, we use it with the ski. It's always the same kind of movement of something kind of expansion out. Bang! This kind of feeling. So just get this kind of feeling where you get to the core of the movement. And that's done not in an energetic sense, in a practical sense. Where do I start the movement from? The hand, the hand, the hand, or the hip to the center. So this is where technique really matters. Form really matters. Because really, really helps me get to the core. Ah, good. So, bam, nice, bam. So, um, yeah, this probably feels like maybe a new movement for some, some of you who've done karate before. This is like standard uh, striking stuff. We do it all the time, though. If you, if you train in, I mean, we all train in this style, some of us less and some of us more. But we do this all the time when we do uh, katatadori and we go to ikkyo. We do this strike. And this is uraka. It's classic because I go to the side of the person and I strike the side of the head. So it's not in a sense that movement like punching the head. So I'm not kind of punching the head, but I'm doing this. So just get used to this now. You're gonna go unlock the movement a little bit. Think about Ikkyo, Katatadori. I slide out to the side, slide out to the side. And then from that, this back hand goes into that position. So just do a few on one side, get the sense of you connect, find the extension, slide out. Slide down and then just introduce the strike. Bam, bam, bam. So just work your way into it. Extension, slide. Extension, slide, start to bring the hand in. Extension, slice, strike. Comes back. Okay. <laughs> in three steps so the, the the main the main thing that's new now is this movement so this kind of slice out so this is a specific movement it goes to the side and i'm going to go this so this this hand does this so what this isn't is this it's not it's not a it's not a movement out again if you go back to the sword i can do a slicing movement which is like this or i can do a slicing movement which is like this now in this case that slice is like this not like that. So don't pull out of it. So it's not about pulling away. It's actually about engaging. So I want to, I, the, the person's here, I want to meet them where they are there, but I want to move the whole body around this way. So I'm getting to the side of the person. So in this case, just work this three ways. The first step, just that slice coming back. Just the slice coming back. Just the slice coming back. And then what I want you to do is with the other hand, don't think about doing anything with it. Just think about bringing it with you. So I just bring the hand now with me. Slice out, bring the hand. Slice out, bring the other hand. Slice out, bring the other hand. So it's starting to communicate the movement to the hand. And then the third step is just bring the strike in. So you slice out, bring the hand, and find the strike, and it comes back. Just work it in these three levels. Just the hand, outside hand slicing, both hands together, and then rah, with the strike. Always when you do like a new form or you do a new thing, practice then practice, find out what's new in the form. So what am I doing that's different from before? Because the reckon ends the same. You're practicing the same thing. So now try and figure out that this, that this slice thing is now the new thing. So that's the thing I need to practice a bit. 
want to go into that movement. How do I do that movement? That movement. That's it. That's it. Good. Okay. Nice. Okay, last, last thing to focus on now is, is the kind of pullback. So when we did the strike out drawback. Now, this is really useful in terms of the ikkyo because I go to the side strike and then it comes back. Now I hijack that movement back and I go straight onto the hand for the ikkyo. So I go, bah, 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 take the hand and then I'm, onto, I'm into the ikkyo. So in this case, just think about kind of hijacking that movement. So you come out, this, this, and then it's basically come on, coming onto the wrist. There. So I create the distraction, dun, 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 and then I'm into the wrist this way. And don't, you can go through the, if you, if you know the you'll go through it, but it's just now getting this feeling that that, that comes back. That, that comes back. That, that comes back. That, so again, extension out, roll out, strike onto the, Asset, correct. I feel like it's kind of magnetic, so it goes out boom, onto the onto the hand, bah, bah, onto the hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Very nice. Okay, nice. And just the last one, you just do it freely. So move around the space, play with just kind of on the spot, play with sliding in, play with sliding to the side, and also play with rotating to the back. It's also a very versatile movement. Lots of movements that you can make with rotations because you've got this kind of whip. But just think all the time, heavy whip, heavy whip, heavy whip, heavy whip, heavy whip. And this is totally the same as doing this. All these kind of stupid exercises we do, if you can kind of get a feel for those, this is basically the same thing. I want to be very light, very loose in the upper body, heavy lower body, oh, and pass it through the hand. You start to play with the hands a little bit, kind of striking, you know, like your Minucci's strikes just kind of unlock it and again it's what the what's happening in the center of the body it's like it doesn't matter what you've got in the hand just do it okay Doki. good Okay, again, this is where the, the sword work, the weapon work, doing a lot of weapon work will really help us in terms of body use and in terms of kind of unlocking the movements because the weapon work really trains a great structure of how to, how to use the body and how to pass impact through the, through the limbs. So we don't have a, we pro you probably don't do in the dojo quite so much. I do quite a bit in the dojo, but you probably don't do so much like a temi work, this kind of stuff. But the good news is a lot of that work is done in the weapon work. So again, it's just a case of unlocking it. So trying to catch the feeling, which is what you're actually doing in the weapon work, which is training the body and training a kind of percussive impact, this kind of feeling. And that translates totally, totally into the temi work, striking work and into a taijutsu. So the feeling of like impacting through the body, impacting through the body, this is totally the same thing. We train all the time, so that's the good news. We bow backs, and the other thing, just play with it. Really play with striking because we don't play with it enough. So that's the key. Okay. So, hi. Domo. Arigato. Gozaimasu. Okay. Good. Thank you much. Okay. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Good weekend. Oh, very.